Well, good morning. My name is uh, T.J. Donovan. I'm a Vermont's Attorney General. Joined with me today is Chief Don Stevens, uh, Representative Brian uh, China, Representative Tom Stevens, Representative Carol Odie, Re Representative uh, Jessica Brumstead. Uh, I am here to add my support and ask the Vermont Legislature to pass H716, uh, which Representative Brunstead and Representative China are the sponsors of. What H716 would do would exempt members of the Abnaki tribe from paying a license fee for hunting and fishing in the state of Vermont. Why I support this is simply because it's the right thing to do and we should look back at our history and acknowledge it's the right thing to do. In 2006, the Vermont General Assembly firmly recognized the Abnaki people. They acknowledged that Vermont was originally the home to several indigenous Native American people, now known as Western Abnaki tribes, who originally inhabited all of Vermont for hundreds of years, beginning long before the arrival of Europeans. The General Assembly also recognized that carefully maintained oral traditions show that Native peoples have long lived in the Champlain Valley and that they demonstrate that the Abnaki people farmed Vermont's river plains since 1100. They also hunted and fished this land for centuries. And when European settlers came here and treaties were negotiated, and did Dave Share from my office is here, who at the request of Don Stephen asked us to do some legal and almost historical research into this issue, the Abnaki people have always made a claim to hunt and to fish these lands. And more important, they always reserved their right to hunt and to fish these lands, which is now Vermont is part of. And when we look at it, why this bill is appropriate now, we are in a unique period of time in our nation's history. We are going back and revisiting our history. We're in a period of reconciliation. We're in a period of reckoning. And in the spirit of that, of understanding the history of our state, of understanding and acknowledging the history, the proud history of the Abnaki people, and recognizing that they've reserved these rights and have made this claim for hundreds of years, for centuries, the state of Vermont should simply re recognize this claim and exempt them from these license fees because it is the right thing to do. It is the right thing to do for the state of Vermont. It is the right thing to do for the Abnaki tribe. And in the spirit of history, in the spirit of reconciliation, this bill should be passed. So Chief, I'm proud to stand with you. I want to thank you for asking us to look at the historical record to look at the law, to understand our history, to acknowledge our history, and to look back at our history. As I said, at this unique time where we are revisiting our history in so many different ways, this is the right thing to do. So let's do it. Chief, I look forward to working with you. I thank you for your leadership. I thank you for your friendship. And I'll turn it over to you. Thank you. I appreciate that, TJ. Did you want to put something up? You can before I start. Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> Did want to put it in front of his notes? No, no worries. Thank you. There you go. Great. Well, I want to say Quay greetings. Um, today, today is a really a historic day uh, in the grand. It seems like an average day, but today is a, a historic day. I mean, we all acknowledge and we see what's happening in the nation today is that there's still a lot of hate and lateral violence, but it really brings me hope in working with TJ over these last uh, year or close to it on trying to get people to acknowledge our sovereign rights uh, and of hunting and fishing that we never ceded. Um, that we, we, as a people have struggled since before Europeans are here. And there's always been, like I said, a lot of hate and lateral violence, but Vermont has risen above the national 
level. You have the legislators, you have the, 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 the state departments, including the Attorney General's office, where, where there was adversarial uh, relationships before. We have found a way to get above that and work in partnership to uplift people and to acknowledge our rights. I also want to say that for the people who always fear what they don't understand, we are not asking for anything special. This, the Fish and Wildlife Department already gives free licenses to senior citizens. They already give licenses to the veterans of this, of this uh, great you know, country. They give, they give uh, free licenses to disability, people with disabilities. All we're asking is to people that the state of Vermont honors our ancient agreements of Vermont before Vermont was even a state that we always retained our rights to hunt and fish our sovereign rights to hunt and fish and as a tribal leader we try to work in a government to government relationship with the state of Vermont and the state of Vermont has been and as you see as we continue to uplift they reject violence against minority people they are trying to do the right thing and this is a huge step in our history and, and with the Attorney General's office. And all I can say is that I urge the legislators to follow. And without the legislators' support of doing this, we would still be in the same place we are. And now that the, the Fish and Wildlife are coming out saying there's not enough hunters in the woods, that we're, we're seeing a lot of people that aren't going into the woods anymore, that we see <clears throat> that um, the governor wants to bring in more tourism and also mentioned to bring more hunting and fishing uh, people to come and enjoy the outdoors and also that um, they're having a hard time managing the deer herd. Well, we're here. Honor our rights. Let us come. There are people that live out of state, our citizens, that would love to come in and be able to hunt. Guess what? They'll spend money in lodging. They'll spend money on items. They'll actually help. And we might even be able to bring in some educational funds if we work with the Fish and Wildlife Department uh, to, do, to provide education, right? So I'm not going to continue um, to, to stay up here a long time, but I just want to say you're right. It's the morally the right thing to do. We acknowledge the fact that you had the um, wherewithal to stand up as the Attorney General in the state of Vermont and acknowledge that and to urge that the legislators and the governors follow through with a commitment of our ancient agreements and honor those. And we're not taking anything away from people. It's just giving us the rights that we already agreed to way back when and just to allow us to be able to sustain our people because we live off the land. We're one with nature. We just want to have our rights recognized. So thank you. Uh, Orioni. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chief Stevens. Uh, next, I'd ask, uh, again, uh, one of the co-sponsors of this bill was Representative Brian Sheena from uh, the City of Burlington to say a few words. Uh, Representative Jessica Brumstead from Shelburne is also a co-sponsor. We thank you both for your leadership. Representative Sheena. Thank you. Um, we're, at a, we're at a time in our history where we can no longer ignore what has happened in the past, and we have an opportunity now uh, to make things right in the present so that we can have a better future for everyone. And in this time, there's a lot that we could be doing as a state to reconcile what happened in the past. And, um, and there's many ways we could be doing that. We did uh, change Columbus Day to Indigenous Peoples Day as one way of recognizing um, and uncovering uh, what really happened in history and honoring who was here first. We're, we're standing on lands that were, have been inhabited by Abenaki people for thousands of years. Um, and we need to recognize that in every possible way um, and, and in everything we do. And so as part of moving towards reconciliation and, a, and, a, and towards a better future, uh, we have to take action to make things right. Uh, we need to apologize as a state for the harm that the state has caused towards Abenaki people. Um, and in addition to an apology, we need to take actions to make amends. And one of those actions, um, a simple action, is to allow Abenaki people to hunt and fish um, and to get free licenses from the state um, 
it's the least we can do as a state to begin to make things right. And, um, and, we, and we need to honor uh, the cultural and religious practices and freedom of Abenaki and all other indigenous people um, and acknowledge that hunting and fishing is more than sustenance, it's a sacred act. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Chino. Uh, next, uh, Representative Carol Odie from Burlington is a member of the Committee of Jurisdiction and I'd ask Representative uh, Odie to say a few words. Thank you, TJ. Um, it is um, the House Natural Resources Fish and Wildlife Committee that will be taking up this bill. We look forward to doing so, and I am personally very pleased to be able to work on this bill. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Odie. Uh, before I open it up for questions, I just want to acknowledge, because I know we'll get this question, I know Representative Odie will get this question. We're going to be talking about revenue, and this does not exempt uh, the Abnaki people from the hunting or fishing regulations, it's just to the fee. And I went online this morning, and a five-year fee for fishing is $134 for a five-year license. 134 bucks for hunting. Combination, you get a bit of a deal, it's 229 bucks for five years. I don't think we're talking a lot, about, a lot of money here. I think as Chief Stevens said, I think as Representative China pointed out, that this is an opportunity for us just to acknowledge the history of this state, the tradition and culture of the Abnaki people, and a recognition that they've always reserved their right to hunt and fish on these lands long before we came here, and continue to assert that, res that reservation of rights during the time when Europeans came and treaties were negotiated, they always made the claim to hunt and to fish, and today we simply seek to acknowledge it, and I'm proud to stand with you, Chief, and members of your tribe. So with that, uh, Charlie, do you want to say anything? Sure. Sure. This is Charlie Delaney. Hi. Um, I'm a citizen of the uh, Nohegan Kalasak tribe, uh, considered an elder now. Um, it was many years ago, um, this, come, this bill comes full circle for us. Uh, many years ago, we had a, um, a fish-in where we were given citations and arrested. Uh, I was one of many people who went in front of Judge Wolchek and our and the state of Vermont at that point in the legal system recognized our Aboriginal uh, rights or created that question for us to go forward. And uh, in all the years that have been sued, there was a lot of things that we, we didn't realize or didn't think that would be possible for this day and things like this to happen. But it's because of the uh, um, state of Vermont realizing um, changes here, uh, the leadership that we have today with our chief and other people that have worked hard on this. It wasn't just one person, it wasn't just me, it was many people over many years for us to have this relationship with the state of Vermont. And it's something that, that is good going forward. And there'll be other things in the future that we'll be uh, asking support on. And we appreciate who we are today. We appreciate the state of Vermont and, and what it has to do. And uh, I thank you for that, Ahal. Thank you, Charlie. Uh, finally, I'd ask uh, Carol McGranahan to come up and say a few words. Carol. Hi, I'm Carol McGranahan, and I am chair of the Vermont Commission on Native American Affairs. I want to thank everyone who has been involved, the legislature, the um, especially Brian has worked closely with us, Chief and all the other members of the commission and members of our Abenaki community for making this possible. Um, I think the probably the most historic and impactful event was when we were recognized as being here and being a people. Um, and that was the opening of the door. We now have our display here in the State House. We have Indigenous Peoples Day. Um, and with this hunting and fishing uh, bill and several others that are before the legislature, 
We're going to continue to make progress, form relationships, and it's it's all positive. I can't thank you enough for everything. Bulyuni. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, before I open to the questions again, I just want to thank uh, Representative Rumstead and Representative China for co-sponsoring this bill. I believe uh, Representative Webb yep. uh, from Shelburne and Representative Carol Odie, thank you for being here and uh, the invitation to uh, for your committee to take this bill up under consideration. We appreciate uh, that invitation. Uh, with that, we'd open it up for questions. TJ, are you making a legal determination that these rights are legally valid? I think when you get into the treaties which we've gone through and whether or not they apply because as a successor government, as the chief said, you know, that's an open question. I, I think the, the fact of the matter is that I support this and we hope that any legal question uh, is resolved by passage of the bill. As far as the logistics, those who are eligible, the license is free, but we still have to go somewhere and pick up a tag to say yeah. that we're here. Yeah, this is, this is just the license fee. All other regulations apply. And, yeah, Chief, you want to? Yeah, sorry, yeah. I'll answer some of that as well. Um, we have a great relationship with the Fish and Wildlife Service. If you don't know, we carry eagle feathers. Uh, you know, we have uh, cultural uh, permits, uh, and we work closely with the, with the Fish and Wildlife Department. So we would do the same as what they do in the federal uh, arena, is that we would certify that the citizen is an enrolled citizen of our tribe, and that would give the Fish and Wildlife the uh, certification knowing that they were a legitimate, uh, if that's what you want to call it, uh, a, a citizen of one of our recognized tribes, because this pertains to the four recognized tribes in, in the state. Mm -hmm. So since we know who our people are, we would certify that they are an, an enrolled member uh, of our tribe or enrolled citizen and then we would they would provide that to the Fish and Wildlife Department and then they would be able to issue that that tag so we would still be involved with that and hopefully we would also be involved with some of the educational we already do educational things at Camp Kehoe and and uh, Dead Creek Days and a few things so we, we work pretty closely with the Fish and Wildlife Department so it's uh, it's not like a willy-nilly thing so that's why I said it's not really affecting a lot of people or or and having a valid license uh, the enforcement, the law enforcement team or the fish and game wardens would yep. still be able to enforce it and not have to determine who's who. So it, it's just, the, like you said, it's just the fee, like they provide every other senior citizen or other people with free licenses, we'd just be another category in that, in that free license system. And, and every, all the processes would still stay in place. So it shouldn't be that intrusive. Chief Stevens, yes. roughly how many people would um, be affected by this? Well, it depends, right? Am I, I mean, we have probably about, 6,000 people on tribal roles throughout the state, but not everybody hunts and fish. Some people already get free licenses because they're senior citizens. Some people are already active military who get the licenses. So we're not talking a huge number. It's not going to be all of a sudden uh, a drain, as, as we said, on the system. It's just honoring our rights, but also there are a lot of people that are citizens. Our territory goes from Turner's Falls, Mass, up into Lower Canada, across New Hampshire New to Moosehead Lake in Maine. Right now, even the governor had said he would like to get more people in the woods and increase the, the number of people to help manage the deer herd. Well, we have non-Vermont residents that are citizens of ours that would love to come and hunt uh, and, and, and be on our property up in, up in the Northeast Kingdom and around Vermont. And that, they would come in and they, would, they have to have a place to stay, they have to eat. They, they would bring some revenue in as well. So it might even offset whatever uh, costs that might happen. So, thank you. Other questions? Yeah. I'm curious if you support the resolution that the legislature is considering passing that would formally apologize for the state's role in the sterilization of Abenaki people and other marginalized groups? Yes. And I'd ask uh, Representative Stevens to speak on that. Sure. Thank you. Yep. Um, yes, we are actively looking at that. It's a joint resolution right now, and the language in that is very simple. Uh, as it should be. Uh, we've taken a long time, a very long time, to apologize for the eugenic survey. Um, UVM made it, uh, an apology last year uh, to start this process, but in, here in the State House, we started 10 years ago with one that actually was put together prior to recognizing the Abenaki tribes, and we know that the Abenaki were uh, really a target of this eugenic survey along with 
French Canadians or, or the names that we, do, we have taken out of the statutes, feeble-minded, um, mis not miscreants, but just people who are considered subhuman, essentially. Huge mistake in our dark, dark history here in the state of Vermont. So the language that we're working on is very simple, um, but we're still taking testimony on it. We're still taking, re we're making research on it. We're trying to find out exactly how far this, this research went to make sure we get it right and to make sure we do it with humility and regret and make sure that it's an honest uh, apology from the state, per at least from the General Assembly's perspective and hopefully as a whole government. Um, what we did in the 20s, 30s, and 40s was, uh, was terrible, simply terrible, and we need to make amends. And so listening to folks whose families were affected by this is an important part of it and getting the, getting the history right is an important part of it. So we're in the process of doing that now. Other questions? Well, I want to thank, uh, again, Chief Stevens and the Abnaki people for your advocacy, uh, for your courage and for your leadership. I want to thank you for pushing our office, for, for taking a look at this. I want to thank Dave Scher uh, from my office uh, who looked at these treaties. Um, there's, a lot there's a lot of them, and they're unclear, uh, and they're really old. Uh, and I would just say from a personal note, you know, this, this was fascinating as somebody who loves history, um, but acknowledging uh, that the history we may know is not always accurate, and that we have to be cognizant of the lived experience of people who were be here before us uh, to reconcile their experience with the history that we think we know uh, and to do the right thing, and that's why we're here today, uh, not only on this bill, but certainly as Representative Stevens so eloquently talked about, uh, saying sorry goes a long way, mm -hmm. and we should never be afraid uh, to do that. Uh, so uh, I certainly support uh, that resolution and support uh, the right of the Abnaki people to be exempt from fees because it's the right thing to do, and we should have the courage to do it. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Thanks, Steve. Thank you, Chief. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.